everybody, it's Disney Queen Skelly here. Welcome to back, back to another Fun Facts video. This one's going to be for The Reluctant Dragon. Now, this is a redo, so if you guys want to watch the original uh, Fun Facts video before watching this one, you can go ahead and um, uh, find it here in this Fun Facts um, playlist. Enjoy these Fun Facts. The Mickey Avenue slash Dopey Drive signpost was built specifically for the movie and was supposed to be removed afterward. It wasn't, and it was, and it still stands at the Disney Studio. Features How to Ride a Horse 1950, the first of the goofy how-to cartoons. When narrator John McLeish was brought in to record the narration, he was asked to read it in a very straightforward manner, as if for a series documentary about horse riding. He was shocked when he was told that the narration he recorded would be used in a goofy cartoon. Most of the animators shown in the film were actually actors hired to portray animators, and this film, showing the Disney Animation Studios as a happy, coherent family, was released at the worst possible moment, when half of the actual animators were out on strike. The strikers frequently picketed theaters showing the film, sometimes holding up a large cardboard sign depicting Walt Disney as a dragon labeled The Reluctant Disney. In the sound effects department, the workers are creating sound effects for a piece of film with the train Casey Jr. Casey would pop up in Disney's next film, Dumbo, 1941. Likewise, in the art department, the animators are making sketches for Dumbo. Bambi also makes a minor appearance in this film, a year before Bambi 1942 was released. How to Ride a Horse 1950 was the first of several how-to films made mm -hmm. in which Goofy doesn't speak. These were made during a period when Goofy's voice artist Pinto Colvig was temporarily unavailable. When Robert Benchley visits the art department, one of the sculptors quickly make a clay bust character of Benchley. In reality, the bust was made in advance and then gradually destroyed while being filmed. The film was simply shown backwards to make it appear as though the artist was making the bust from scratch. This is the first full-length feature for Disney where the voices are credited. Portions of this film had to be redone because of objections by the Hayes office. The dragon was originally drawn, drawn with a novel which had to be removed before the film could be passed. Some of the maquettes, 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 we're going to say maquettes, shown are from early versions of Peter Pan, 1953, and Lady and the Tramp, 1955. According to supplemental information on the DVD, this film was rushed into production to help keep the studio solvent. The start of World War II closed Europe and American movies to American movies, and this cut off much-needed revenue for Disney. When it was released, it did save the studio, but it was not well received and was heavily criticized by the public who were expecting a full animated feature. In the Baby Weems sequence, Mount Rushmore is seen with only George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. The faces were still under construction until October 1941 and this movie was released before it was finished, which is why Theodore Roosevelt and Thomas Jefferson are missing. The Donald Duck parodies of old master paintings were originally made for an unproduced cartoon in which Donald is a guard at a museum. The film was being developed by Frank Tashlin during his brief un uneventful stay at the studio. The paintings were later used for promotional print stories. Maquettes in the model department including, include Jiminy Cricket and the drunk cuckoo clock from Pinocchio 1940, characters from Fantasia 1940, including Chernabog, a black centaurette that Robert Benchley takes with him, and the knight from the reluctant dragon 1941. During the sound effects segment, they show a clip of Casey Jr., which later appeared in a much shorter version in Dumbo 1941, film debut of John Denner. When Ward Kimball shows Robert Benchley how to draw Goofy, the, the close-up of his hand drawing the image is actually that of Art Babbitt, and the pencil test of Goofy dancing shown shortly afterwards was animated by Wolfgang Retherman. Those are your fun facts for The Reluctant Dragon. Again, this was a redo, so please go rewatch the other one if you'd like before watching this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, next, I will actually be uh, touching on a Disney theory, so if you guys want to catch that, um, of course, it will be in the Disney Theories playlist, so look out for that video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe. Love you guys.